Chrissy's Books. I am Chrissy. Thank you for tuning in to my book reviews. It's a new year, it's 2021, and I'm so excited to get started on a full year of awesome reads. So I started uh, this week with an awesome, exciting book. So for this week, I read When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Y'all might have maybe heard of this book. Uh, it's one of those books that was just everywhere when it came out. You could not escape it. It was on all the lists. It was like an instant New York Times bestseller book. Um, and yeah, just everybody was reading this. And I'd love to give a huge, huge, huge thanks to William Morrow Paperbacks of HarperCollins Publishers for sending me a print copy of this book, so thank you. So this book is a thriller and it was advertised as a mix between Get Out, the movie, and um, Hitchcock's Rear Window. Um, yeah, as soon as I heard that, I was like, I want to read that. That sounds really interesting. It sounds like, you know, not your average thriller, so yeah to read it. Let's jump into the plot for When No One Is Watching. The setting is Brooklyn, New York City, best city in the world. Um, we follow a woman named Sydney Green. She's a true New Yorker born and raised in her beloved hometown in Brooklyn. As much as she loves her street and her neighborhood, lately she's noticed that it seems to be changing within the blink of an eye. Condos are popping up all over the place. Um, her local shops are, be are being turned into like bougie, you know, chic stores. Um, there are for sale signs everywhere. And her neighbors are literally disappearing overnight. To hold on to her community's past and present, Sydney channels her frustration into a walking tour of her neighborhood and finds an unlikely and unwanted assistant. One that happens to be one of the new arrivals on the block and his name is Theo. Sydney and Theo's dive into history soon becomes a twisted and dizzying descent into paranoia and fear. It turns out her old neighbors may have not moved to the burbs after all, and the eager push to revitalize the community may be more deadly than advertised. Where exactly do local people go when the gentrification pushes them out? When does coincidence become conspiracy? Can Theo and Sydney trust each other for long enough? to find out before they too disappear. So that is the premise or the plot for this thrilling rear window slash get out um, book. Stay tuned, because when I come back, I'm gonna give you my review and I'm gonna give you my song pick for this exciting, thrilling read. <laughs> Welcome back! Thank you for staying tuned um, and if you guys really enjoy my book reviews, I read a lot of different genres, hit that subscribe button and also like the video, you know, show me some love, leave some nice comments, you know, let's get talking. Let me know if you've read this book by the way, really interested to know if, uh, you know, what you guys think of it, if you agree with my review. Anyway, let's jump into my review. Yeah, the review for When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Um, so sometimes when I pick up books, I actually don't know what they're about. Um, I only kind of knew that this was literally advertised as a thriller book, it was everywhere, um, and it was advertised as a get out meets rear window, which I really like the idea. So yeah, it was really fun to read this book because I didn't really know what to expect with it. So this was a really, really interesting book um, and I definitely see what all the hype was um, surrounding this book and it is an exact mix of Rear Window and Get Out, like literally just married together, um, which I thought was really cool. So let me talk a little bit about the characters um, in this book. So we follow Sydney who is a 30 something year old black woman and she basically is living in her you know fictional uh, Brooklyn hometown it's just like that classic story of you know you grow up in a neighborhood your entire life especially a neighborhood like Brooklyn or you know any neighborhood really and you start to see gentrification happening right in front of you soon like all of your old neighbors are disappearing so 
I did really like that this book was quite relatable. I think a lot of people will relate to this kind of uh, book, especially if you're from born and raised um, in a specific like, you know, city where, you know, everybody wants to live in and things are changing and you've got condos and your rent is going up. So it's very timely and it's very now, which I really liked. I really liked the characters in this book. There weren't a lot of them. Um, so it is mostly told from Theo's point of view and from Sydney's point of view in the book. So it's super, super easy to read this book. Um, we just basically get their perspectives throughout the entire um, read. Sydney was a really fun character. She's very down to earth. She's really cool. I really liked her. And Theo was like, you know, your, he was white. So it's, it's a white um, male. And yeah, he was just also a really sweet character. And um, you know, he also kind of, it's also quite a relatable character, especially if you are a white guy living in a city and you're not from that city and, you know, you are trying to not blend in, but sort of try and see where you fit in, um, especially if you're living around local people. So yeah, it was a really interesting um, character development in this book. You learn quite a lot um, reading this book. It was uh, it was cool because you learn a lot about Brooklyn history. You learn about redlining. Um, I will leave, you know, these terms below if you do want to uh, learn a little bit more. A lot of this I kind of already knew, but, you know, maybe if you've never grown up in a city or you haven't really read up about cities, you do actually learn quite a bit in this book. So I did like the little, like, um, any, any book where you learn something new, I always think is really cool. I will say that um, for, I would say, two thirds of the book, I completely forgot that I was reading a thriller because it kind of felt more like a drama in a way, but it was really gripping. It was fun and it was like very refreshing. I really liked the writing style um, of this book. Like she was sort of writing it as how she would say it. And I really did like that. So um, it was felt just quite like real and relatable. Anybody can read this book. Yeah, so anyway, I was saying that um, while I was reading this book and because I didn't really know a lot about it, except that it was supposed to be a thriller and it's a mix between Rear Window and Get Out. And it really is that you do have that whole you know you can picture if you've been to Brooklyn uh, I don't know if you've been or any city really where you have sort of like nice you know neighborhoods and um, apartment buildings you can actually see some most of the time what your neighbors are up to so you know you do get that sort of mysterious like you know what's going on there you know it's really like creepy and it was really interesting um, and yeah I would say for like two-thirds of the book it really kind of like built up really well but it didn't feel like a thriller for to me for like you know I would say a good chunk of the book and then right towards the end it just sort of like jam-packed suddenly turned into like a psychological thriller but it happened so quickly like it was just sort of like ah it just felt really rushed um, but yeah, it definitely kept you gripped throughout the entire book. It's not like I was bored or anything. It was a really good read. Yeah, so the only sort of like, it's not like it's a negative comment or anything, but because the book really built, builds up to this sort of like, you know, crescendo to the end of the book, it just sort of happened really fast. And <laughs> I was just sort of like, whoa, what is happening? So I just kind of wish that maybe there was a little bit more built into the middle of the book because it just like the stuff that happens at the end is just so 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 intense and it just happens like that and you're just like whoa okay sure when no one is watching is a good impulsive read and it's um yeah it's good if you like a thriller with a little bit of a twist so it's not your average thriller and it really does deal with a lot of so social justice issues um, which I will talk about in a little bit. But first, let me jump into my rating for this book because you're probably wondering what I gave it. For my rating for When No One Is Watching, um, I gave this a thrilling read a rating of 8 out of 10. So yeah, it was a really cool book. So 8 out of 10 basically means that this book was a really great read. It was a good read. I enjoyed it. It had a really good story. I was pretty much gripped the entire way through and I definitely see what the hype is all about like I actually get it yeah it was a good read it was great if I could describe this read with four words they would be um eerie uh, because this book is really creepy <laughs> it is a little bit like you know side eye emoji what are your neighbors up to it is kind of like really creepy and like tense and mysterious. The second word is feisty. I really, really liked the writing style of this book. It felt quite um, 
like relatable it was really real and it was sassy as well i like that the main character was a black woman she was very strong and independent um yeah it was just really feisty and like a witty and funny book and the third word is traumatic uh and this is simply because I think as a black person, you just feel really weird after reading this book. I was shook. Um, so yeah, you definitely get that feeling that you got after you watched um, the movie Get Out. So if you did watch Get Out, you probably will have the similar feel feelings after that. Even if you're white, it doesn't have to, you don't have to be a black person, but it's just sort of a bit like ugh, um, traumatic and it definitely deals with um, social injustice it deals with um, gentrification it really does actually deal with a lot of real life issues which i really liked fourth word uh, but not least is provocative and that is because this book is a definite th uh, thought-provoking read i just thought it was really different it's not like your ordinary thriller book um and i really enjoyed it and also like a little fun fact in the book they would have like because it is a neighborhood they'd have this little chat group which was really fun so it's you know i live in a place where there is actually like a neighborhood chat type of thing so it's very relatable and people post all kinds of weird stuff in there and yeah it was just a it was an interesting book and it was really really good I will say that all in all, this was a really good read. I enjoyed that it was a different type of thriller than your average thriller. Um, it was very impulsive and I definitely liked the underlying message that Cole left us with in the book. And I definitely get what the hype was all about as well. I do recommend for you to read this book. And it's exactly a mix of Rear Window and Get Out. I will post links for those below in case you're like, what is he talking about? There's a complete mix of that. It's got racial issues. It deals with gentrification. It deals with social justice. And it's also just a good thriller. Um, like I said, the only negative thing was that everything happened like so fast at the end. I was just like, ah, <laughs> it's a bit unbelievable. But um, yeah, I loved it. And I love the vibe. I love the setting of the book. It was really cool. Brooklyn is just like one of my favorite cities. Um, and it made me miss Brooklyn so much living there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> great book. With all that said, let's jump into my song pick for when no one is watching. So for this song pick, uh, if you guys don't already know, if you're new to my channel, I heart music so much love music um, and I love pairing a song with the books that I read and sometimes it comes really naturally and I think of like I can think of a vibe that I want and that's what I felt with this book I knew that I wanted a song that was old school I knew that I wanted a song um, that was a rap uh, song or hip-hop song I wanted it to be about Brooklyn you know because there's so many great rap songs out there about Brooklyn so many I can think of I wanted an old school song but then I wanted it to kind of reflect old school Brooklyn before like all the gentrification all the new kids and all the hipsters came into um, you know to any city it doesn't have to be Brooklyn it can be London it can be you know Paris wherever um, so yeah so my song pick for when no one is watching is a track called The Place Where We Well and it's like Gangstar. So check out the video. I don't think it's a music video, but you can definitely listen to the song. I'll link that on here. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this week's review. See you all next week.